For instance, now if your wife wears clothes you don't like, and this is because you love that, you not like my wife, this cloth now is not good. I never say so. You tell her, my wife, come. You know, that cloth fits you better than this. You are telling her already that this cloth is not good. They say, come on, get out. That's why you look like <laughs> See, see, see where you look. <laughs> and I said, you know, last week, that dress that is a bit, that's why you are looking very fine. I did that, that style. She already gets your message. But I said, come, see all your legs, strong legs. <laughs> <laughs> you have killed the woman in the heart. Stop. That one is no longer love, it's criticism, it's what? Uh, you are no longer, you, everything in the heart will just die. So also to the man, he said, look at you, how can you dress like this? The man, every that makes me mad will die. He said, no, 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 that, that's why, that one you wore black and red, no, fine, but this one now, three colors, five colors, no. Well, let me help you. The man will even be happy. But he said, no, 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 I can see, you just see how Joseph dressed, you can't you tell that Joseph, no. <laughs> Don't compare him and Joseph, please. He's your husband, it's not Joseph. Since he didn't marry Joseph, don't compare him with Joseph. Look for solution. Look for what? Now, to even friends, you can correct her. Now, you can say, don't keep this kind of friend. This woman around you is not helping you. You talk to her. I didn't say that because you love her, you can correct your wife. You are your husband. My husband, since you get close to this man, I told that you don't even pray. Since this man became your friend, your, your prayer life has gone down. Please, leave this man alone. He's not a good man. A good man cannot make you, you come every day, night like, like you come. Night like, like you come. <laughs> It's every night you're coming home now. Every night, this man is not a good. You can correct a man in love. You know what? Criticizing and correction are not the same. You correct people, you don't criticize people. Forgive and forget. Forgive and. If you hurt your partner, be humble enough to say sorry. Now, let me say this to you. When it comes to love, go to bed together on the same bed. I'm going to be practical. It is difficult to stay mad on the same bed. Check all of you who are sleeping apart. Your quarrel gets longer. I don't mean you cannot have separate bedrooms, but when it comes to sleep, go and sleep in one, on one bed. Anyhow, two of you are quarreling. You can't sleep on one bed for five days and quarrel. But the, the, the moment the husband is sleeping up, wife is sleeping somewhere, two of you don't sleep together, I tell you, quarrel will last for very long. Because it's an advantage for two of you to be away. Two of you have your different bedrooms, but when it comes to sleep, sleep on the same bed. It sets us quarrel faster. Because by the time you put your hand up, there's no way she will throw it off. <laughs> if you throw one, one, second one, she will not throw it because she will leave the thing to stay. <laughs> He said, how does this man know how this is? <laughs> I don't have to break my hand to know how to massage hand. <laughs> I call them the five Ds that will make your love work. Five what? That will make your love work. I call them love tonics. Five love tonics. Five Ds that will make your love work. A, devotion. A what? Devotion. Invest time with each other. That's the meaning of devotion. Invest time with each other. B, discipline. B, what? These are the things that make your marriage work. Discipline. Self discipline is important. Be disciplined yourself. You know what is wrong and what is right. That is, like, for instance, stop keeping late. Nice. Don't do things that will annoy your partner. That's self discipline. You know your husband is closing by four. Why are you talking with your friend at four when you have not prepared? Food, that's lack of discipline. You know your wife is coming back home. Why are you chatting with your housemate in cross with your leg open and the asket is open before you? I mean, she, I mean be disciplined. Be your housemate now is sitting down with big breasts and then the legs are open before you. Be, dis be disciplined. Be what? Be disciplined. Be what? Be disciplined. Be what? That will make your love work. It's discussion. It's what? It's discussion. Learn to discuss mutually in a relaxed atmosphere. In a last what? 
Talk about your physical relationship. Talk about your physical... Listen, talk about your physical relationship. For instance, a wife told her husband life story that he no longer kiss her. She told him, she said, my husband, you don't longer kiss me. And, and that's a physical relationship. So two of you relax. Let her feel free. Don't make your... Do you know that women cannot express themselves? Because of how their husbands have created an atmosphere. They can't express... So they die in silence. And the church refused to preach it. The man will do as if it's a sin. The wife cannot talk again. And she's dying. And women bottle up. Relax. Create an atmosphere. Your wife can tell you, do you know what? You are not coming close to me for some time now. I mean, that makes you a marriage. Say, here. She should be free to tell you, you are a husband. So for some time that you have been so far from me. You don't even touch me. Just come back up and get up. No, don't do that. No man should talk to you, you are the worst one. And then you will now say, okay, my wife, sorry. Next time I'll satisfy you. It's better for the woman to be satisfied than the man first. You know why? If the woman is satisfied, the marriage will go well. If the man is always satisfying himself, well, he will have crisis. <laughs> D, determination. D is what? Be determined to make your marriage work. Be determined to make your marriage work. Don't allow anything or anyone disrupt the home and family. Mm? These are the five Ds. E, direction. E is what? Plan for the future. Nothing happens by chance. Plan for holidays. Plan your outings. Plan time together. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Number three is excellent money management. Excellent what? Poor money management can cause great tension, stress in the home. Don't spend more than you earn as a family. That will make you constantly live in death. Learn to live within your income. Learn to live within your income. First Timothy 6, 6 and 8. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Having food and raiment, let us be therefore be content. Couples, sit down and work out a family budget in a simple plan. In a what? Plan does not limit your spending, it defines it. Planning does not limit your spending. It does what? Invest first in the kingdom. Pay correct tithe. Pay what? Give quality offering as a family. Save before you spend. What did I say? Buy a car you can afford. Plan your shopping. Avoid impulse buying. That is just enter shop and buy. Say, let me hear this. Hear this. Buy what you need. Not what is on sale. Buy what you need, not what's what. What makes people to buy impulse buying? They say they are, they are on sale. Don't go to buy something because it's on sale. Buy it because you need it. Otherwise, you get into impulse buying. Most times, you say they are, they are on sale. You buy something you don't really need, and your money has gone. God hates waste. Here's what many families are under stress because of this factor. Send your children to schools. You can afford the fees. Stop running to anywhere you go to put to pay school fees. That school is bigger than your family size. Take the child to a school you can afford. Live in a house you can pay. Stop writing notes to people in church for house rent. These are financial things for family. Finally, make Christ the head of your home. Make Christ the head of your home. That is, make the word of God. Your final authority on any issue is the one who can make good better, better best. When there was no wine in John chapter 2, he provided wine. With him, you can never run dry of wine. The wine of joy, the wine of peace, he will always provide. And he said, whatever I say to you, do it. John chapter 2 verse 5. This is the wisdom that we all need for our homes and marriages. Number one, communication. Number two, love. Number three, sound financial management. Then for the singles, hear this. In one minute, avoid low self-esteem. Avoid what? The way you see yourself is how people will see you. If you think you're a failure, you will only attract failures. God has made you wonderful. Don't go and marry because of present conditions. You are a pearl of great price. Never look down on yourself. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 17, he said, And they shall be mine, said of hosts. And that day, I want to make up my jewels. May I welcome my word? I spare them as a man, spare his own son. And Psalm 139, verse 14, he said, I'll praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made.
responsibility as a prize for greatness. You can't wish a good home. You consciously build it. God loves the family. He wants us to succeed in marriage. He said it is not good for the man to be alone. Genesis 2.18. Anything good incenses the enemy. It gets the enemy angry and the enemy is the devil. Now hear this. God is the originator of marriage. He instituted it. But he kept a manual for you and I to follow. If you buy a product and you open the product, the first thing you will ever meet is the manual. They say, before I pray in this equipment, read this manual. God is the only one that instituted marriage. No government instituted marriage. No culture instituted marriage. So he kept a manual for the operation of marriage. And the manual is the word of God. Anything outside the word will end in crisis. If you take an equipment and say, well, I will not follow the manufacturer's manual. I will do it my own way. You will blow up the equipment. That's why today those who try to do it traditionally end up divorcing. Those who do it their own way end up having crisis. Because the one who is ready, you must follow his manual. But as you follow his manual today, you will never have crisis. Many have kept his manual aside and have tried to do it their own way. That cannot work. So we're looking at how to be successful in marriage. How to be what? Number one, recognize it is possible to have a successful home. It is what? It is possible to have what? It is possible to have a successful home. It is possible. Jesus in Mark chapter 9 verse 3 said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So if you believe that you can have a successful marriage, it is what? Possible. First and foremost, believe that it is possible. That's where the journey starts. It is what you believe you become. There can never be a performance until you believe the word of God. In Luke chapter 1 verse 45, and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be what? So it is what you believe that God will perform. If you have a faulty belief system that marriage is evil, nothing can make it work. Nothing can what? If you believe that marriage is evil, let them pray for you, lay hands on you, it will never work. First and foremost, you have to believe that it's possible to have a successful marriage. That's where the journey starts. The moment your belief system is faulted, forget it. It won't work. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is it. Proverbs 23 verse 7. What you think and believe controls your life. What you think and believe without what? That's it. Don't be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So your mind has to be renewed in line with the word of God, Romans 12, verse 2. That look, it is possible to have a successful marriage. Renew your mind with the word of God. Don't run your marriage like the world run their own marriages. You have to run your marriage with the word of God. Renew your mind. Your grandfather did not succeed. Your father did not succeed. Does not mean you cannot succeed. Say so here. So, believe that it is what? Possible. And I know it is possible. If that can believe how many things? Including successful marriage. Number two, who are you listening to? That is, who is talking to you? That's what I mean. Who is what? Who 
is talking to you. <laughs> I'm going to bring a deep insight for you. Every tragedy begins with a conversation. <laughs> Satan is the invisible enemy. But he walks through people. And he never walks without conversation. Every time Satan wants to flaw someone, he converses with the person. I was studying not today's teaching. Why, let me digress a bit, why every husband and wife should always be close? In my deep studies, when two of you are not close, Satan will flaw you. I deeply understand from scriptures. Where was Adam when Satan was conversing with Eve? In the first place, why should it be somewhere else when it was only two of them? It was not close to her, so Satan took advantage. Check all these marriages where wife is in Houston, husband is in Nigeria. I can tell you 95% of them have problems, including men of God. All these distant marriages, it doesn't work. Doesn't, I've not seen one distant marriage that does not have crisis. Not one. Even if they are not divorced, problems are under. Nature abhors vacuum. Wife cannot be in Chicago. Husband is in Kavashan. Somehow, somehow, it not only means immorality alone, the person will begin to do what he or she likes because two of you are not close. Satan will creep in. Adam was not in the same place with Eve, so Satan took advantage. So I hear. Satan speaks as a third voice. As what? Identify the third voice speaking to you. Mm. Look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 28. I will tell you something very powerful. <laughs> Let's read it together. He said, a, shall we read together, please? Everybody read together. Want to go? A forward man soweth stripe, and a whisperer separated chief friends. Mm -hmm. That that your husband, that your husband. Let me tell you, there's something you don't know about him. Don't tell him all. I want to tell you. It has started. That's the third voice. That's a that your wife. I know you don't know, but I'm a friend. It's whisper. That's the Bible calls whisper. Don't tell her, but I'm telling you, she's my friend. Look at how, they, I like this translation. Let's see he said, troublemakers start fights. Gossips break all friendships. <laughs> Gossips are the third voice. Listen carefully. In the world today, we have different voices speaking to us. From movies, from friends. They, everything you see has a voice speaking. Even your children are influenced by what they hear and watch on television. Let me say this to you. Every word carries an invisible seed. Every word carries an invisible seed. That seed will grow. There's a way you watch Nigerian home videos that if you are not careful, anywhere they want to serve you food, you'll be careful. You suspect that somebody wants to poison you. The seed of the things you're watching. If your husband says, I'm traveling, the first of course to you is going to meet another girl. Because in the film, you saw it, every travel, one girl. Everything you watch speaks with a voice, negative or positive. An experiment, life experiment was done. Hear this story, life story. 
They took dolls and kept children. They showed it in a film, life story. And they kept the dolls and then they show a set of children, kept the children there where the adults tender the dolls. And another film, the adults hit the dolls, threw the dolls, dealt with the dolls. So they took the children and watched the dolls that they tender into one room and took the ones that the adults hit the dolls to another room and dropped the dolls. All the children that watched the adults, what they called it, mind the dolls, mind the dolls. But that was what they saw. And all other children that watched that side began to thunder. Life story. Every time you hear something or watch something, it's a seed that has entered your system. It will play back. If you see your father beating your mother and you don't take God's word to check it out, a third voice will come to you every time your wife offends you to slap her like your father. If you see your pastor talking to his wife in public anyhow, a third voice will come to you when your wife is annoying you to talk to your wife anyhow. And if you see your pastor respecting his wife in public, even when you want to be angry, you say, no, my pastor does not behave like this. Everything you see plays a picture and it drops a seed on the inside. Every time a quarrel wants to come, a husband and wife, and somebody whispers to you, this man is my to you anyhow. Even when he has not opened his mouth, the moment you come in, he says, I'm going to quarrel this man. The third voice is what is making you to quarrel. That third voice that spoke to you, that this man is my treating you. So even when the man has no tin in his heart, he says, how are you? He says, how are you for what? The third voice is already making you to react. A seed has been sown. He's my treating you. You to tell him who you are. So even when the man has nothing in his heart, he says, no, I'll show you. You have, you have treated me anyhow. Now me too, I'm a woman here. Stupid. The man wonder what is happening. It's the third 